everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar. Today, I'm in a secret location, and we're going to talk about The Art of Comics. In particular, this non-discreet hardcover bound book that I personally made. We're not really here to talk about the custom binding, although we could. We're going to talk about Gotham Central, the amazing story, the amazing series, t the first 25 issues by Greg Recca and Michael Lark. And um, this is really, really good. This has been collected in some trades. First came out early 2000s. What do we got here? 2001, 2002. I bound up the first 25 issues. Some of them are a little hard to find. Actually, you can find most of them on 20, 25 cent bins or dollar bins. Um, it's been bound in some trade. There was an omnibus at one time. It's kind of hard to find, I think, and expensive. This book is so good. No joke. It's a DC book. It's Gotham Central. It's a procedural. And today we're going to talk about it. We're going to go and dive into this book and say, why did Salazar think it was worth finding these issues and binding this? Because this is no joke. And I want to talk about it. So let's dive down. Let's get into... Gotham Central. Booyah. Okay, everybody, let's talk about Gotham Central. Uh, this is some end pages I did. It's no big deal. Um, it was kind of fun to use some markers. I did the same thing on this other side. Um, and if you guys want, give me the comments below if you want me to talk about binding and how to do that. I made this myself, hand stitched this. Uh, it's called um, Smith Zone and uh, glued it, stitched it, all that kind of jazz. So that's kind of fun. And we could talk about that and kind of go into that world if you like. But I want to talk right now today about Gotham Central. Um, it, this was a book that many people told me I should check out. Ed Brubaker, Michael, uh, excuse me, Ed Brubaker, Greg Rucka, Michael Lark coming together. And Ed and Greg kind of switch off on writing duties. Uh, and there's a couple fill-ins from another artist besides Michael to kind of give him some some breaks. This book is so good. It is, um, I think, some of their best work. This is a procedural. This is like straight up. This is not like the TV show, okay? So if you're thinking like it's like, see, I mean, it's in some ways it is. But really, this is, you know, some of my favorite shows are like The Wire and S.H.I.E.L.D., and those kind of like shows and those aren't particularly you know procedural procedurals like you would think of like a you know csi or nypd blue things like that but this is nypd blue this is homicide this is hill street blues you know old school david Minch style but um but set in you know Gotham and set in the DC universe. So we're going to have some super villain, superhero stuff. Batman does show up. We do get some villains, but it's really about these cops, these detectives specifically in the homicide uh, department of um, Gotham Central. And it's just really, really good. The art is really well done. I think it's Mike, some of Michael Lark's best stuff. You know, he's he's done a lot of different work with with these um, writers, and I love the way. I mean, it reminds me. It's you know, again, it's kind of like that Jean Paul Leon style, uh, Tommy Lee Edwards, Michael Lark, all those guys with heavy blacks, big brush strokes, um, a lot of uh, shape, and a lot of um, hard lines, geometric lines, things like that. A little bit of Alex Toth kind of style, you know, some, some simplistic elements to it, uh, not heavily detailed, but every, all the backgrounds are done. Okay. He's not chintzing on backgrounds here. Uh, like all those guys, realistic guys. Um, so the art is really well done. The positioning, the framing, it's, it just tells the story really, really well. As for the story itself, um, it's a series of, you know, mini minis of like two issue, three issue, four issue. I think there's like a, maybe a five or six issue 
arc in here that talk about a particular crime or something like that. So it's very procedural. You get it's a who done it. There's a you know a mystery involved. Very TV procedural. I mean, this could have been a TV pilot. This 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 could be a, a show like in its form as it's written now. The dialogue, everything feels very much like a TV show. And I say that in a in a complimentary way. Um, some just, some just great character character work by these writers of who these different detectives are, their interactions, the hierarching, the pecking order of the detective department, um, the homicide department, just seeing how they they work together and the kind of the challenges they have, the political elements of it too. It's just really, really, really well done. Line of Duty, um, this one's good. Well, and you'll have some cameos of some guys. I mean, a lot of it is the separation between the superheroes and the the normal humans, you know, the muggles, whatever. And how when a supervillain shows up, it's like, well, it's a supervillain, so Batman's got to roll up in this, right? And what happens when Batman doesn't roll up into it is a question. And what if we don't want Batman to roll up in this? And so there's those kind of like dilemmas and questions of the division of labor, so to speak, with crime fighting, you know, between the, the, the police department and the vigilante and superhero community and how that, how, what that dynamic is like. So it's really kind of cool in that way too. I, I think this ages really well. I know it's like, you know, 18 years old or whatever, but I think it works still to this day I just read this uh, last week, and I think that it is still on point. It's still valid. The stories are still good. The art is still great here. You, we do get to see Mr. Freeze and uh, Batman. And, um, yeah, I think it's just really freaking well done. Um, so it starts off with, you know, this first arc about um, a cop getting killed. And then there's another arc about a murder and they try to find out who did it. And, uh, you know, so some of these, there's no superheroes at all. In this second story, there is no superheroes or villains involved. It's just uh, this crime and what goes on. And it turns out that um, X, Y, and Z happened. So we won't go into what that is. But Batman does uh, save somebody and... Um, you know, so it's kind of like they'll just show up, right? And just for a couple frames or a page, they're there in the background or they're there uh, just to kind of keep cementing it in that world. But it's not really about those guys, uh, the supers. It's about these guys. This is also reminds me if you've if you've read Powers, and we'll probably go into Powers too because it's another great book. Um. So it does have a little bit of that, now that I think about it, a little bit of that power. Although Powers is specifically dealing with supervillains, right? That's the whole division. It's like the Powers division of the cops, uh, where these guys are just doing crimes, right? So whatever crimes, homicide, you know, burglary, whatever, they just deal with that. And more than likely, a supervillain might be involved, right? So that's how this works. I love the art. Again... Um, simple, expressive, just the right amount of things. Um, not too heavily detailed. This is great imagining. This kid finds a batarang at a school because uh, Robin showed up, who's probably one of the students. He fights Killer Lacroix. And what happens? A batarang bounces off and falls on the ground somewhere. A kid picks up a batarang, right? I mean, this is what would happen, right? You would have these like weapons and paraphernalia of superheroes and villains just lying around and what happens when normal people grab one right and so this teenager grabs a batarang and but what does that mean like how does that get in, involved in the the crime or the story and so um both Greg Rucka and uh Ed Brubaker as you guys know have done a lot of crime work that's kind of their that I think I would say their big genre that they are um, have dedicated a lot of their career to, and it shows here. And again, um, it's just some great, great stuff. There is a there's a great story. This is um, Half a Life. 
this was a good arc too about uh, a cop getting kind of framed. I don't want to spoil too much of it, but there's another great one, which is I think a six parter about Joker. And it's not your average Joker story. There is a definite twist to it. And I don't want to spoil that, but it is really good. And this, I think this won some Eisner's or Harvey's. This did win some awards and I'm not looking it up. I'll let you look it up. But um, it was regarded soft targets. Soft Targets is the, the name of this uh, mini, this little like six part story. And um, basically uh, it's, a, it's a serial killer and they're getting shot up. And the sniper is going around shooting up politicians and different people. And they're trying to figure out who it is. And it turns out Joker may be involved. And so Batman's not on this one. And it's like, where's Batman? And there's, this is a great cover by the way. This Michael Lord, this is just a great cover. I really like his style. I think this is a great book that could work in black and white, clearly. Uh, I mean, when he's inking, it feels like it the inks are done for black and white, um, which I think is kind of interesting and it's something for me to think about because my book is black and white. So I think that I think that that's kind of like something similar to that. Um, I like, I really like the muted colors. Reminds me of, you know, 100 Bullets, something like that. Um, which is another great book. Ah, oh, we gotta talk about 100 Bullets too. That's another great book. So there's that. Um, so yeah, this is a great story. This Soft Targets with the Joker. Anyway, this is 25 issues. I think this is where it either ended or it just kind of petered out a little bit, maybe a couple issues after that. But I felt like this was a good point. And when you're binding, going more than 25, it gets a little, uh, it gets a little dicey. So I decided, let's just stop there. Um, this is not Michael Lark, this is somebody else. Who is this? Let me go find out right now. This is Greg Scott. He did this issue. So Michael Lark got a little break on this one. But uh, it's, a, it's a great story, uh, great book. There you go. That's my that's my take on this great great comic series. Find them in the comic bins. It's called Gotham Central. If you like procedurals, if you like crime, you don't have to like Batman, but if you like Batman, that'll be a little bit of a plus. Um, you know, TV shows, things like that, you would dig it. And uh, this is it. So thanks very much for checking out the channel. Uh, feel free to link, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, share it, you know, all that jazz, and have a great day. Bye, guys.